presentation we have to talk about uh, geiger natal law in 1911 geiger and natal experimented with studying the relationship between the range of an alpha particle in air and the half life of several alpha emitters see first of all you should know the meaning of the term range of an alpha particle when alpha particle passes through a gaseous medium it ionizes the gaseous molecules during the process of ionization alpha particle loses its energy the ionization process is continued until an alpha particle is converted into a neutral helium atom you know that uh, alpha particle consist of two protons and uh, two neutrons alpha particle has no electrons but if you think about uh, a neutral helium atom it contains two protons two neutrons and two electrons so we may say that alpha particles are nucleus of uh, helium atoms say there is a nucleus then two electrons are orbiting around the nucleus in the privileged orbit this is helium atom but uh, this is the nucleus of helium atom is called uh, alpha particle then we know the many of the term half life suppose the radioactive element uranium is taken for our consideration the initial concentration is uh, n then the time taken for uranium to reach the status of uh, n by 2 is called half life that is time taken for 50% uh, degradation of that radioactive element is called half life so they analyzed several alpha emitters and they observed the relationship between the range of an alpha particle in air and the half life period finally they arrived an empirical formula that is log lambda is equal to a plus b log r here lambda is the decay constant r is the range of an alpha particle a and b are the two constants they predicted nuclei with more considerable half life period emit the least energetic alpha particles at the same time nuclei with shorter half life periods emit higher energy alpha particles suppose a nucleus is taken for our consideration if the nucleus is having small half life period it should emit an alpha particle with higher energy at the same time if the nucleus is having higher half life period it should emit an alpha particle with lower energy low half life period provides high energy alpha particle high half life period gives low energy alpha particles say this is the relation connecting decay constant and half life period the decay constant lambda equal to 0.693 divided by t of suppose the value of t of is less then the alpha particle coming out of uh, the radioactive element is having higher energy at the same time the decay constant is also high suppose the half life period of a radioactive element is high the radioactive element should emit an alpha particle with low energy at the same time the decay constant value is also low because of uh, higher t of see that uh, this is a definite for range the distance traveled by an alpha particle in a gaseous medium until it is converted into a neutral helium atom is called the range of an alpha particle then geiger and natal proposed an empirical formula connecting the decay constant and the range of an alpha particle that is log lambda equal to a plus b log r according to 
Geiger's law, the range is proportional to the cube of the velocity. Say V be the velocity of the alpha particle, then range is proportional to V cube. But the kinetic energy E equal to half mv square. Here we may say the kinetic energy is proportional to square of the velocity. So with the help of these two equations, we can write range is proportional to e power 3 by 2. If you take log on both sides, log r is proportional to 3 by 2 log e. Therefore, log r equal to b dash log e. To remove the proportional design, we have introduced this constant log r is equal to b dash log e. Now, the geiger natal law, that is log lambda equal to a plus b log r is expressed as log lambda equal to a dash plus b dash log e. This is geiger natal law in terms of energy. If we plot log lambda value against log r, for different alpha emitters in three series. The three series are uranium series, thorium series and actinium series. Three nearly parallel straight lines are obtained. One for each series. One straight line is for uranium series, another one is for thorium series and the third line is for actinium series. The constant B has the same value for all the three series whereas A has different values for each. See this uh, graph. Suppose uranium series is taken for our consideration. At this point the range is very low. Low range means the energy of the alpha particle coming out of the system is low. Suppose the half-life period of a radioactive element is high, it should emit low energy alpha particles. If the energy is low, the range is also low. If the half-life is more, the energy is low. If the half-life is more, the lambda is also low. See here, here the range value is low which means that the energy of the emitted alpha particle is low and the half-life is more. If the half-life is more, then lambda is also low. So the y-axis provides the value of lambda which is also lower. But if you consider this point here, the range is high which means that the energy of the emitted alpha particle is high. If the energy high means the half-life is low. If the half-life is low, then the lambda is high. So, the corresponding y value is also high. So, in this way, we should understand this uh, graph. The importance of this Gaganetta law is the decay constant values of many radioactive substances can be determined using this uh, empirical formula. To understand more about uh, uranium, thorium and uh, actinium series, See this, this is thorium series, thorium 9232 is the starting material and the final material is lead 82208 plumbum. The conversion from thorium to lead is taken place in 10 steps so that in between thorium and lead more radioactive elements are existing. During this process of uh, conversion of thorium into lead, 6 alpha particles and 4 beta particles are emitted. This is called thorium series. In the case of actinium series, uranium 92 to 38 is converted into lead 82 to 07. During this conversion process, 14 steps are involved. Here, 8 alpha particles and 6 beta particles are emitted. In the case of uranium series, the starting material is uranium 92238. The final product is lead 82206. 
During this conversion process, 14 steps are involved. Here, 8 alpha particles and 6 beta particles are emitted. But in between, uranium 92 to 38 to lead 82 to not 6, many radioactive elements are generated. But each and every radioactive element is having different half life. Therefore, the alpha particles emitted by each and every radioactive element is not having the same energy because of their different half lives. In this way, we may point out that a radioactive element with less half life period may emit high energy alpha particles and, and a radioactive element with High half-life period may emit low energy alpha particles. That's all about our Gegenetal law.